Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we celebrate Christmas with a visit to the Solanus Casey Center, and then we take a look at some of the great events that happen in the D all year long. So stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. We're at the Father Slinus Casey Center in Detroit, and this place is a pilgrimage destination for people all around the world. They come here for an oasis, his body is entombed here, and he was recently declared blessed. Tens of thousands of people, millions of people worldwide have become aware of Father Solanus and the work that we do here. He really has been declared somebody who is with the Lord in heaven. Uh, he will have, he has a feast day, he has you know, special prayers to him, his mm -hmm. image is allowed within chapels and churches. What would be gained with canonization is he becomes not just a local figure, but truly a worldwide figure. So Father David, what kind of things do you find when you come to the center? We come in through the doors, we come in through Christ, and then we reflect on the people that we have seen who've inspired us. Not just Father Solanus, but there's many others. We pass through the ghost chapel, as we call it. Our first chapel, was as big as this. So we started very simply and to mm -hmm. remember our roots. And then this, this is just spectacular. Dominic Pangborn's studio is down the street. Uh -huh. We were talking about beatification. We we're saying what kind of major art piece could we have? Yeah. And he said, I'll do <laughs> one. It's a reminder that Solanus comes into our lives and mm -hmm that we reflect on his presence in our midst. This is the museum area, like it tells about his life. This is the museum, it tells about his life story. He's one of how many children? 16. 16. And growing up on a farm in Wisconsin, uh, the struggles of early farmers, mm -hmm and then trying to find a living and doing various things, working in a prison, working as a trolley motorman, working uh, as with loggers. So he was trying to find some way in which he could just survive. And I think that gave him throughout his life a sense of the common person. He started wanting to become you know, a normal parish priest mm -hmm. and he came here on Christmas Eve, began his journey here and then spent many of the years of his ministry here, where it was really the core of his ministry. As we look at the kind of life that he lived, and it was very simple and basic. At the end of his life, he said Mass privately, and by that time, people knew that he was truly a very holy and a saintly person. So they, they kept these items as a uh, memory of his presence here with us. And we have actually three books that have pages and pages and pages of answered prayers and of his reflections about his ministry. So we have some direct from his own handwriting wow. and his own words. That's, that's what I was wondering. I'm yeah. going to ask you next. Where, so you have these actual books and yes. his writing. And wow. his writing. So ours is to say, how do, we, how do we take those insights, those sayings, that kindness that he had, and bring it to the contemporary problems of our city, of our state, and of our world. Solanus was very aware that we are in this greater assembly of saints, mm -hmm. and so, we have here some of the people that were inspirational to him. St. Martin de Porres, Claire of Assisi, Our Lady of Guadalupe.
this is all, it's a prayer chapel, so we have visitors all day long. It's a little oasis. It's a spiritual oasis in the midst of the city. So people love to, to come. And, and as we were thinking about this, this is a man who is always approachable. Mm -hmm. We did not want to put this up on a pedestal. Yeah. We wanted to have it, and he didn't want, he wouldn't want to be up front. He would be in the back of church mm. and just humbly be there with people. And so people come back and spend, spend time reflecting on his life and ministry. And then as we do that, then we're ready to say, let us come and see this man mm -hmm. who has done so much for Detroit and for our world and that we then come to the actual tomb. The center of it really is to say, let us go to the tomb and ask the intercession of this man who's answered so many prayers by the grace of God. Even as you and I can pray for each other, mm -hmm. if we really believe that he's with God, then he can join us in that prayer. So we're not praying to him, yes. we're praying with, with him. him asking for the blessings of God for those who are in need. People come and bring prayers mm -hmm. and say, I want you, Lord, and Solanus, by your intercession, to answer the struggles that we have in our family. Maybe it's my own health, maybe it's a relative's health. The miracle that happened that allowed for the beatification, she came up from Panama and knew nothing about Solanus. She came to the tomb and prayed, it came to her, you should pray for yourself. <laughs> and that's why this one was accepted by Rome because it was here at the tomb. Mm -hmm. It was instantaneous and she was- what? Tell me, tell me. She was cured of, of, of a skin disease that, was, that she had for her entire life. She was under no medical care for it because there was nothing that she, they could do for it. The yeah. skin started coming off of her and underneath. For the first time in her whole life, mm. she had clear skin. This man has touched many lives and this center and his life story are an inspiration to all of us. taking place today, November 18th, 2017. We're at the beatification of Father Solanus Casey at Ford Field. We're going to have about 65,000, 70,000 people coming for this historic event right here in the D. We've got dignitaries here from around the world. We've got bishops here. We've got 350 Solanus Casey family members. They're here taking pictures. The altar behind me is where it's all going to happen. It's a historic time here. Here. So this is a once in a lifetime type of uh, opportunity. You know, this is the uh, a man who was uh, very pious and uh, charitable, mm -hmm. uh, sort of the poor of Detroit. Um, potentially, he will be the uh, first male uh, canonized um, as a saint from the United States. Um, he's only the third person from the United States to be beatified. Okay. So it's a special moment for not only the Capuchins, uh, but also for the uh, entire region, city of Detroit, and for mm -hmm. the United States. So this is a, this is a wonderful event. We'll have 70,000 people in here in a few minutes yeah. uh, for our Catholic Mass. And these are people from all around the world. Yeah. Uh, and they are here because they're believers. And, I'm getting you know, goosebumps faith. just listening to you. It is, yeah. I know, I it get goosebumps really... <laughs> thinking about it, you know. 
I'm so thrilled to be here, Definitely. you know, as a Catholic and as a member of the Detroit community. It doesn't get better than this. This is historic and blessed, and I'm just glad to be here. We've had faith and hope for so long, um, and to have one of our own be so recognized as a man of kindness and good works, um, helping a neighbor and feeding 2,000 people a day since the Great Depression, all happened here. I think it shows the power of believing in each other, and I think it makes for the kind of city that people want to visit. It's such an honor to come back here again and be a part of the city and part of the outreach to the poor and disfranchised and those who are usually marginated in our society. Yes. Just to be friends, friendly to them and for them to know that there are a lot of good people here that want to reach out and help. That's nice that you're continuing on his legacy. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On the recommendation of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints, by our apostolic authority, decree that the venerable servant of God, Francis Solanus, known in the world as Bernard Casey, professed priest of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, a humble and faithful disciple of Christ, tireless in serving the poor, henceforth be called by the name of Blessed, and that he may be celebrated annually on the 30th of July in the places and ways established by law. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Given in Rome at St. Peter's on the 11th of November on the memorial of St. Martin of Tours, Bishop, in the year 2017 of our Lord, the fifth of our pontificate, Francis. This is a beautiful and heartwarming ceremony and it was a once in a lifetime event that people here will never forget. Glad I was a part of it.
are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit, and our calendar events is up next to point you in the right direction. Ford Field hosts the College Football Quick Lane Bowl. Then take the kids for some unique indoor fun. Squeeze in your last 5K of the year at the Family Fun Run. Then ring in the new year with the Kids Drop and the D Drop. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. Detroit is known for many things, including festivals that draw visitors from around the world. We have all kinds here, from music to special interest to food, art, and more. So let's dive into the culture of the D. So right here in the heart of Detroit is another awesome festival. It's the Detroit Music Weekend Festival. It's a weekend filled with free music and good times. Tell me what an exciting event we have downtown. Tell me about the Detroit Music Weekend. Well, thank you, Veronica, for the opportunity. I have been thrilled to be part of the organizing committee for Detroit Music Weekend. It is a festival that means to bring all of the performing arts together in downtown Detroit. We have not just all genres of music, because Detroit is all these kinds of music. It's not just Motown. It's not just R&B. Yeah. It's not just electronic. It's all these things. Plus, the region has an incredibly deep bench of performing artists. We send dancers out into the world, theater artists, puppetry. So we have all of this on four stages going on today. There's some 300 artists participating, wow. and we are thrilled with how this is going. It's a festival with our little shopping, right? Even though it's a music festival, they've got a whole bunch of booths, and they're all Detroit-centric. We've got Motown Museum, House of Pure Vin, Detroit Historical Museum, the DIA, whole alley full of Detroit booths. So tell me about the Detroit Music Foundation, Brian. Well, the Detroit Music Foundation, our whole mission is to establish Detroit as the music capital of the world, Detroit Music City. Makes sense. We are. We are the, we are the music capital. There's no question about it. Yeah. And everywhere you go around the world and you talk about Detroit, everybody talks about our music. Yeah. Thanks. And the, I think the beautiful thing is it's not just one genre. Right, right. The great thing about Detroit music and our culture has been all genres. So we've got stuff for kids. We've got beer. We've got water. We've got food. We've got sunshine. And best of all, we've got great Detroit music every June at the Detroit Music Weekend Festival. And here in Hart Plaza, every June is the Motor City Pride, another huge festival. So what a perfect place to have an event. We've got the water out there, there's views of Canada, Hart Plaza's right there, we've got the city skyline behind us, and they couldn't have picked a better spot for Motor City Pride. Motor City Pride is an annual event that we hold in Detroit each year for the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have about 35,000 participants who will come into the city for the festival. It's a welcoming environment for our community. It brings people in to experience Detroit that may not normally come down into the city. Yeah. We bring people in from not just in the suburbs but from the area around here. Yeah. Quite a few from Ohio, from Canada. We see we have people coming from Indiana, maybe even further away. So it's a time to come back into the city, see what's going on, and take part of that. We have five stages of entertainment, five, okay. over 150 performers at the morning through the weekend. I think it's a huge success. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank and you it's for being here. Thank you. It's the second weekend in June Each year, right yes. here in Hart Plaza. Are well, you having a good time? I'm having a great time actually. I'm loving it. It's a lot of great vibes, a lot of love. Okay, so you flew all the way from Scotland to come to the Motor City Pride? Yeah. Amazing. I'm really excited to be here. Uh -huh. It's just Amazing, amazing weather, an amazing place. So this is your first time in Detroit? This is my first time in downtown Detroit, and it's just amazing, and it couldn't be further yeah. from what kind of the international reputation of Detroit is. I'm from Glasgow, which is a city in Scotland which has exactly the same reputation as Detroit, yeah. so I know what that's like yeah. on the other side, so kind of the reality 
is not what the city is actually offering. Yeah. We're just having the best time ever. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, you can go back and spread the news around the globe. I okay? will be spreading <laughs> the news back in the UK. This is refreshing. I'm cooling off at the Motor City Pride. Oh it's the God. second weekend of every June. Get the right idea. Great, you've got Don and Hart Plaza, you've got the three stages down there, they've got the streets blocked off so you can come here, you can have some summer fun, there's people out playing chess, you've got these great artwork here. It extends all the way down Woodward to Campus Marshes Park and it's great because it feels like the whole city is part of the Jazz Festival. Well, so Chris, what a fantastic event. I'm so proud of you at the Jazz Fest in the D. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, you know, the Jazz Festival has been going on for nearly four decades now, and one of the amazing parts, it's become the largest free jazz festival in the world. But that we also do it in such a way that we tear down the barriers to participation, so it's something that the entire world can partake of. So the free element is really significant. And in all the world, I'm here to tell you, there's nothing like it. Four stages running from the riverfront in Hart Plaza all the way up to Campus Marshes, the Cadillac Square area where we have the Chase Main Stage. In between, we have wonderful food vendors, we have beverages, adult beverages, soft drinks, and so on. And then we have our talk tent, which is a place where you can meet the artists up close and personal. There's interviews and there's panel discussions. And then we move it up to the Marriott Hotel, where we have jam sessions. And you need to know the jam session venue is a thousand seat venue, so it's really a big venue. And the real trick here is to work it out so that families and patrons and new visitors to Detroit can come onto the footprint yeah. and have that intuitive experience of knowing where to go, how to get there, how to explore the environment, and hear what they need to hear, and sometimes just walk around and see what they encounter, yeah. all within our city. It's not in a field outside the city. It's not in a building. Mm -hmm. It is within the architecture, the people, the culture of Detroit. Jazz is more than just an entertainment music. It is an art form. It is a form of communication. And in the city of Detroit, it's in our DNA. It's right. part of who yeah. we are. so lucky to have Hart Plaza for these wonderful events. It's right off the riverfront. We've got the fountains going. The food trucks can pull right up. So wherever you're at, you feel like you're immersed in that experience. It really is set up to be a great place for festivals. I am loving it. I just moved here a year ago, and we have the whole family out today. And it's a beautiful day in downtown Detroit. And yeah. some great musicians, really young, very inspiring for my sons. People who really love jazz, they know that this is real stuff here. It's really great that they also have high school bands and university bands because then the kids get to see that they, they, there's a future in it. got Campus Marshes Park right in the heart of the city. It kind of kicks off with the big tree lighting ceremony behind me. That ice skating that happens all winter long and of course the big D drop that rings in the New Year, New Year's Eve night. They have the children's one at 6 or 6 o'clock and then the midnight one that happens for the adults. It's a lot of fun. I bring my kids every year. So as you can see, downtown is really booming all year long. We've got great festivals throughout the spring, summer, fall, and then it all ends here. It transforms into a winter wonderland. Thank everyone for watching and I want to let you know that this is our final episode and we have been so blessed and fortunate over the past 14 and a half years to be able to bring you the best of the D. Merry Christmas and keep on discovering the D.
to learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. Hang on, I gotta figure out how to turn it. Always something happening here. You never know what. Oh, hang on. Oh, how's that? Is that better? Thank you. <laughs> Does that happen often? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is even to get more direct.